Having decided that you're going to use a, a ball screw or a lead screw, what you've got to consider is what a typical setup of um, an application would look like. What you typically do is send you uh, a, a lead screw without machined ends, okay? So that's not going to be much use to you. So generally, you can machine these ends yourself or we can machine these ends for you. And when the ends have been machined, they will end up looking something like that. So typically what we've done is we've taken the material down to a certain diameter. Um, it's got some fixings at the end of it and then that will then be able to fit into the either end. So typically you'll have a fixed support, fixed uh, bearing support at one end and a floating at the other end and you will then be able to use Amazing. that. Basically, a typical setup will be a lead or a ball screw. It'll have uh, two uh, a bearing at either end, a fixed end and a floating end, so that means that the um, it's not going to seize up because you're going to have two fixed points. So you've got that and then you will tend to have a, a linear rail running along the side to keep the whole unit straight um, and I'll show you some sort of different applications here. What do I mean when, when I'm talking about bearing supports? So what we've got here is uh, this is a fixed end support okay so that's how the unit would come and you will be machining the lead screw or the ball screw so that will fit so this diameter here at the end of it will fit inside this bearing so that then is the driven end okay because you're going to be obviously it's pointless having this, the the unit set up you're going to be doing something with it you're going to want that that nut to go up and down and that's going to be taking a carriage or a fixture or something like that up and down uh, the length of the, the screw with you. So this will be at the driven end, so you can either drive that uh, from a motor or you can drive that from a, a hand wheel and at the other end you're going to end up with something like this which is the floating end. So this is typically how it's supplied. So you've got a bearing in there, that bearing will pop in there and that will give the whole system some so this is fixed and this will give the whole um, some ideas so it can take up any slack. So a fixed end and a floating end. These units here, for example, can be fixed either uh, from the front or in this case from the top and bolting it down to something solid there. So all the dimensions that say uh, about machining the ends of the screws are in the catalog um, and also on CAD as well, but we can do that if that's what people want to do want us to do. Sometimes, especially with certain bearings, it's actually difficult to come off a, uh, a ball screw nut. You, you, you might need something else that you want to, to mount onto this um, ball screw nut. And so we've also got these units here which are called ball screw, uh, ball screw mounted units and basically this is the wrong size but basically you can just simply fit that over um, over the diameter here and then that will fix in place and then you can then start using these bolts at the top here to fix the elements that you want uh, onto this so that when the whole carriage moves it's taking your component back and forth with it. So they're quite useful as well. Another quite useful piece of equipment is, uh, is something like this. This is a motor mount. So let's say you wanted to drive the uh, system by means of a motor, but you, so you've got to then go from that mount, there'll, there'll be a little part protruding out from there, and you need to mount the motor to drive the whole thing through this bearing here. Well, this is, this is the wrong size, but this gives you a right idea that basically what you can do is you can mount this fixed support onto an end here and then in the middle you have a little coupling that will then mate with the end of the uh, screw that you've machined down and then sticking back out, back out of that you will bolt the motor on. The male bit of the motor will go into this coupling, this is then fixes onto your screw and the whole thing is driven in that way. That's if you want to have uh, a motor driven system. You might, for example, want to have a, a, a manual system. So, for example, you could machine the end of this, so that could suit the hand wheel here, for example, and you can drive it around manually. 
Um, you can also build into this here a system, um, if you can see here, but this has got little counters on it. So you can put this in the middle of it as well. So basically for every revolution, this will give a, a special counting. So if you want an operator to drive the unit to a specific fixed point and back again, you know exactly the display is clear about where that um, part is.